Hi everyone, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel today. My name is Taylor with Active Girl Lighting and here we are today to talk about 24 watt high output LED T5 horticultural lamps. We're going to be comparing these lamps to the traditional technology which are 54 watt high output T5 fluorescent lamps. We're going to be showing you three different things during this test. We're going to be showing you the wattage difference when they are being utilized in fixtures like the ones behind us. We're going to be showing you the spectral differences, spectral analysis between the three tubes. And we're going to also show you uh, the PPFD. PPFD is the photosynthetic photon density over a certain area. We're going to designate a two by four foot area for this test to show you those numbers. So let's get to the tests and we'll get into more details as we move on. For all of our testing today, we will be using the Active Grow brand T5 high output horticultural fixture. This particular model will use eight tubes and uses a smart ballast by Fulham. It runs at 120 volts. As we get right into our tests, the first side we will look at is the fluorescent side. As you can see, there are eight tubes here. As we go over to our kilowatt system, we can show you again that this fixture runs at 120 volts. When we click on the wattage, you can see clearly here that the wattage is right around 390. And when we click on the amps, you can see the amperage is at 3.5. Now, as we move over to the LED side, you can see that we're using the same fixture, also with eight tubes and that it's running at 120 volts according to the kilowatt system. When we start to look at the wattage, this is when you can really see a difference as it is 215 watts to run those eight lamps and the amperage has come down to 1.96. To review the energy consumption portion of the test, the T5HO fluorescent lamps are on the left and the Active Grow T5HO LED lamps are on the right. You can see that the wattage and the amperage was much less on the LED side, and each fixture saves about 176 watts, or 45% of energy, versus the fluorescence. For the spectral analysis part of our test, we will be using the Everfine Plant Lighting Analyzer. This spectrometer is extremely useful in our lab as it shows 300 to 800 nanometer wavelengths and photosynthetic flux output. First, we will do our spectrometer test underneath the fluorescent tubes. So we simply hold the spectrometer below the tubes, wait one second, and bring it back to show you the, what the plants are seeing, which is this spectral output here. A 6500K fluorescent tube usually has a little bit of blue, some green, and some red. When we take a closer look at what's called the RA, or the CRI, color rendering index, it is 84.3. Sunlight is closer to 100. So this is not so bad. Now as we move over to the LED side, we will be showing you the Active Grow Sun White Spectrum. It is worth mentioning that the PAR, or photosynthetic active radiation, are the nanometers from 400 to 700. Here you can see that from 400 to 700, those nanometers are almost completely filling up the spectrum. If I were to take this outside and show you what the sunlight looks like, it would be a very similar result. As we can see in more detail, the RA number, or CRI, which I pointed out earlier, is 95.8, which is over 10 points more than the fluorescent, and only 4 points away from natural sunlight. Now as we go into the last portion of this test, we will be looking at the Active Grow Red Bloom Spectrum. As you can see, it looks a bit red on my hand, but this spectrum is unique in that it uses one diode to create two nanometer outputs, one at 445 nm and the other at 660 nm. These two in combination are perfect for flowering and propagation, and when combined with the Sun White Spectrum, can create an even more full power output.
Now to review the spectral analysis portion of our test. On the left, we have the traditional fluorescence spectrum, which is 6500 kcct. In the middle, we have the active growth sun white spectrum with high CRI. And on the right, we have the active grow red bloom spectrum with a focus on the 445 nm and 660 nm wavelengths. Now for the final test of the day, we will be showing you the PPFD coverage, or the photosynthetic photon flux density. We will be showing you the test results of the T5HO fluorescent lamps versus the active grow T5HO LED lamps with sun white spectrum. As PPFD readings are very sensitive, we will go into a completely dark space where the only source of light is the T5 high output fixture. We will place the fixture at 24 inches above the spectrometer at the dead center. This is the space that should have the highest PPFD reading. Just to show you, this is the fluorescent tubes we are testing now, as you can see by the spectrum. Once we go into the data, the number we care about the most is umoles over meters square per second, or PPFD, which is 276.78. This number is simply how many photons in the power range are hitting that, that point per second. So now to have a 100% equal fair test, we did not move the fixture, we simply changed the bulbs in the fixture. And to prove that, again, we will show you that we are 24 inches below the fixture at the dead center, nothing actually moved. And we are taking our reading now for the LEDs. So as you can see here, to show that they are again the LEDs, we can see our sun white spectrum. And when we go into our data and look for the PPFD number, you can see here that it's 269.34. So that is only seven points away from the high output fluorescent bulbs. One point of data is not entirely useful when we want to understand the, the uniformity of this system. As we take points of data for every six inches for both the HO fluorescent and the HO LED, you can clearly see that although the fluorescent side has a higher PPFD point in the center, the LED is able to keep higher PPFD points throughout the entire 4 by 4 foot area. This is due to the T5 LED's wider beam angle which creates a higher average PPFD and more uniform light. We at ActiveGrow pride ourselves on providing products that help growers grow sustainably by cutting their energy costs and cutting their carbon output. We hope that this test was beneficial for your understanding of horticultural lighting systems and the latest technology available. If you have any questions for me, my email is taylor at activegrowled.com. Thanks again for watching.